are you? <laughs> Good morning. So this is going to be a fun episode. If you've been watching the channel, you know that the engine in my blue car has been hurt for quite some time. Uh, it ingested some dirt, washed out one of the cylinders. It's got low compression. It smokes. It is not in good shape as you saw from the beginning of this video. But today's the day. I'm going to put another engine in this thing. There's a race on Saturday. It's currently Wednesday. No problem. I can absolutely get this done. Now the engine that I'm going to be putting in this is going to be a JDM 2 liter single cam. So I'm going to be doing something quite a bit different here. But my hope is that the extra revs will counter the loss of torque. Plus I'm going to be putting an equal length header on the thing. It's going to sound a little Honda. But I think it's going to be awesome. Should be able to get probably another 1000 RPM or more after I tune it. Which is kind of important when rally cross you're only using first or second gear i mean if you can carry that speed out longer in one gear and not have to shift it could make the difference on some courses so we'll see i'm just interested in doing something different one of the really fun things about this is actually because i'm changing the engine i'm going to be going to modified all-wheel drive since it's not the engine that came in the car i'll no longer be legal for prepared so i'll be going up a class with a smaller engine I don't know if this is going to work. I don't know if the car's going to be faster. I don't know if it's going to be slower, but I have to try. And the JDM, it's a 202 or a 203, depending on, you know, what year it came out of. But basically the block's the same. They're ultra cheap. I mean, $700 all day long for these engines from the importers here on the East Coast. So it's just too cheap to not try. But without further ado, let's get the engine ripped out of this thing and get started. The engine is out got a whole bunch of junk on the table came off the car uh, i'm not going to wash the engine bay or anything like that i've done that before and it's caused problems you get water into these connectors and it can really really muck things up but it doesn't matter anyways it doesn't need to be shiny to win races so here's the old engine here's the new engine there are some things that i need to switch over right away i can tell that this coolant crossover pipe is different so that'll need to swap over and i've already stripped all this down this came fully dressed with a intake and accessories and all this other stuff but i took it down to the long block uh, a few things other things i should say that are going to need to be changed are going to be this breather that's definitely different on these motors um not quite sure how I'm going to do that. I'm going to have to slide hammer that out. And then these are almost always automatics. So I'm going to have to most likely swap out this cam gear and probably this crank gear, just depending on the number of triggers. Uh, while I'm in there, I'm actually going to pull out these sensors as well and grease them just because that's best practice. Uh, they like to seize in there. And just in case they ever fail, I need to get them out. And now's the time. 
So I'm just going to start stripping this thing and stripping what needs to be stripped off of this thing and start swapping stuff over. Uh, still need to get some parts and yeah, should be able to get this thing pretty much done and back in by the end of today. I don't see why not. So back to work. Got both of the engines stripped down. Installation is the reverse of removal. So I have actually cleaned everything, uh, the surfaces and stuff off the replacement 202 engine so that all the 2.5 liter stuff can go on here. I had mentioned earlier about switching the cam and crank pulleys and this is why. So this is an automatic trigger. You can see there's a whole bunch of teeth on here and this is a manual trigger. You can see there's fewer teeth on here. So uh, some of us in the industry refer to this as few and many, but manual and auto, whatever you want to think about. So these are the pickups for a manual transmission car. You can see the back of the cam gear is different. There are seven pickups versus an automatic. There are two. The reason that Subaru does this is the automatic has sensors in the transmission. So it knows where the crank is, where the main shaft is. So it doesn't need to pay as much attention to the cam gear. It's kind of interesting. It's just a different way of doing things. But if you switch these engines out and you're not paying attention and you try and put a manual or an automatic or vice versa, it won't start. And that's exactly why it won't start. It's because it's seeing the cam and crank triggers at the wrong time. So it'll never fire. Tep top tech tip. Say that 12 times fast. So going to put this back together. I went ahead and just cleaned the thermostat housing, put a new gasket in there, reuse the thermostat. I'm slightly concerned of the position of the water outlet on this. It's kind of forward and down versus on the, on the uh, US cars, it's actually supposed to be down a little bit further. So I, don't know if, I might have to switch the water pumps out. I really don't want to do that. But anyways, I'm going to keep chipping away at this. Um, I don't have any 2.5 liter RS intake gaskets, but the turbo gaskets are exactly the same as far as the size and the orientation. So they will work and they will seal. So in a pinch, you can use, these are EJ205, 257 gaskets, whatever the case may be, but man, look at the intake on this thing. It's just dirt and oil, so nasty. This thing was just wrecked. So it's going to be awesome with a healthy engine in it, but I'm going to do the timing on this and button this all back up. I'm going to take a look at the water pump really quick, uh, and then that's pretty much it. Got to go get a slide hammer to get the crank vent out. So I'll go do that and keep cranking away. All right, good news and bad news. Good news. All the parts came in, and the dealer actually had some of the parts that I needed. They had four intake manifold gaskets, a water pump gasket, crossover O-rings. So that's really handy. And then the oil filter and the exhaust gaskets came in. Ended up finding a slide hammer at Hazard Fraught. So be able to pull the breathers out of both engines and switch those over. Show you how to do that here in a minute. And unfortunately, the bad news, do have to switch out the water pump. There's just no way for the lower radiator hose to fit the way that it's going to be. I was looking at it, probably could make it work. Not really interested in forcing that on there. I'd rather just do it the right way and just swap that pump over. It's fine. It's only like 7,000 miles. So, and the name of the game here is reusing stuff and cheap. So had to buy a couple gaskets. There's some stuff you absolutely shouldn't reuse, but you know, as far as pulleys and stuff, I'm going to be figuring out which the best ones are from the two different timing kits and we'll just reuse those. Intake manifold needs to be clean. Need to switch out the gaskets, uh, or sorry, the injectors do all that. And that's pretty much it. So a little bit more work, just transferring parts over and getting everything squared away. And then should be able to uh, start working on stabbing this thing back in the engine bay. Awesome.
and just like that i got everything transferred from the old 2.5 liter over to the new jdm 2 liter some gotchas if you guys are going to be doing this swap uh, and i've gone over a couple of these but now that it's all done i'm just going to go over all of them all at once you're gonna have to switch out the water pump could the lower radiator hose work yeah maybe but it puts the fitting for the lower hose kind of out here so the hose would have to be shorter i don't know just swap it over just use the us spec rs water pump you will have to change out the cam gears and the crank gears as discussed because of the pickups and that is an auto to manual thing that's not specific to the jdm motor coolant crossover is different on the us 25 compared to the jdm 2 liter so you'll want to switch that over now i did not switch the metal gear over from the passenger side cylinder head to the jdm motor it's still got a plastic gear on there just don't care going to really hope that the cam and crank sensors are the same if not these are actually you can get to these when uh, the engine's in the car it's not that big of a problem intake manifold goes right on wiring harness goes right on nothing to report there the only other thing and this again is an automatic to manual this is not a jdm to us spec you'll notice that there's actually a hole on the back of the cylinder head here this is for the egr so this needs to be plugged i'm going to work on this next you can actually take this coolant plug and put it in the EGR port on the left side head on these. That's pretty much it. Got everything cleaned up, got all the gasket surfaces prepped and ready to go. So just gotta put that coolant plug on and this thing should be ready to stab in. Uh, I have to put the clutch on and stuff too, but I'll do that when it's hanging on the chain. I think I might pull the clutch fork off and just lubricate this pivot ball and, and make sure that all this is good because there's, uh, <laughs> there's some dirt and grime in there. Probably take care of that while I can, while this is all out. And then that's it that goes in there and then turn key and vroom vroom so back to it engine is in almost everything is attached whole top side's done had to go with the new alternator i found some corrosion on one of the pins on the old one factory air box is on i don't think it's quite right it sits wonky but it's all attached and it's sealed up i was running an air intake that had the filter down into the bumper and the filter got pushed up onto the bend and so it was sucking dirt in around the seal of the filter and that's what trashed the engine so we're going back to the old stock air box with two air filters. There's a K&N in here, and there's a paper filter in there. I don't know why they did that on these cars, but it's actually pretty handy for rallycross. It's sucking in a bunch of silt. It's got oil. Uh, it doesn't have coolant. I still need to do the lower hose. Need to get the exhaust on. It needed to be clearanced just slightly. It's out here drying slash cooling because I had to spray it with water. Heat it up with a torch. Give her a little persuasion. Got some extra clearance right there. So I'm gonna put this bad boy up underneath there and bolt that up. And lower radiator hose, coolant, a few other little things. I'm not gonna put skid plate on because I want to check for leaks and do some other stuff like that. And that's pretty much it. Oh, look at that. There's a bolt. I grabbed another. That's the problem with having buckets full of extra bolts. Is that if you lose one, you can kind of cheat and just grab another one but always have totes full of extra bolts super 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 handy anyways i'm gonna get under there and hook the exhaust up and then we should be ready to start this bad boy
engine in, tuning done. She is ready to race this Sunday. I gotta take some stickers off and give her a bath, load her up in the trailer. That's pretty much it. I already checked the tires and everything else is good to go. So, what an easy swap. If you're looking to put an RS back on the road or maybe just do something different, that EJ202, EJ203, it's, it's, they're cheap. They're cheap and they're pretty easy to do. You know, I showed you the few little things that you gotta switch around and, and bring over from the old engine and that's it. It's super easy, there's nothing to it. But I'm very excited. I'm, it's gonna be really cool to see how this thing performs uh, with that 7,000 RPM red line. So I got a couple, couple mile per hour in first and second gear now over uh, stock RS over this car for the last I don't know, eight years I've been racing it. But anyways, that's gonna be it for this episode. Thanks so much for hanging out.